and he commanded the porter to watch. So it is Christ on his shoulder. He has the key of David and he commanded the porter to watch. When we read in context in Mark chapter 13, in the coming of the Son of Man, he talks about the fig tree and the command of the porter to watch. Now, we know that Christ has the key of the house of David. You see that in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 in relation to the church at Philadelphia. So he has the key and he says to the church at Philadelphia that that key opens the door. And the door is to the house. And the house is the temple. So this is the order of the porters of the key to the house of David. Okay? That's what's happening in Revelation, and that's who he is addressing in the command of the porter to watch. In the house of David, if you have watched the playlist on the house of David, you know there are four branches of service. There are the 24 elders, there are the 24 singers and musicians, the 24 porters, and the 24,000 times 12 army. Okay, so that's the 144,000 in the army there. So this is the order that we see throughout the book of Revelation of the 24 elders, of the priestly order, the kingly order happening throughout the book of Revelation and the worship around the throne. So the command here is very significant. So in this video, he commanded the porter to watch. And we can see also in the context, the fig tree. Okay, so we're here in Mark 13. And in Mark 13, it says, Then you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with, to gather his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Learn now the parable of the fig tree. That's verse 28. When you see the branches yet tender and put it forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. 29. So ye likewise in, in this manner, when you see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the, what? Doors. It is nigh. It is even at the doors. So what is the doors? The doors relates to the key. Okay, and the key is to the house. Okay, so the order of the coming of the Son of Man is the order of the temple. Okay, so Christ, he has the key of David, and he's commanded the porter to watch. So, he goes on to explain that no man knows the day or the hour. So we don't know the day or the hour, guys. We're not saying we do. We're saying that within his words, when he's talking about the fig tree, when he's talking about the doors... When he's talking about the porter, when he's talking about watching, these are specific, detailed instructions. Okay? So, will I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things shall be done. Verily, uh, heaven and earth will pass away, my words will not pass away, but of that day and hour knows no man... No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Okay, so we're not saying we know the day, but we're seeing that in verse 26, you're seeing the Son of Man come in his glory. Then he is giving us instructions. He's talking about the fig tree. Okay, we'll talk to this about the fig tree in a second. All right, the day of the hour, no man, not the angels. Don't. So take heed and watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Okay, now... In the Greek, the word watch means uh, a combination of words basically meaning not and sleep. Okay, not sleep. So watching is when you stay awake on your post, on your guard, to stand watch at the gates. Okay, stand watch at the towers to see. Okay, these things come to pass. So we're supposed to be on these towers on this, watching for his words to be fulfilled, that of all the stuff he talked about in Luke, uh, in Mark 13, Matthew 24, and in Luke 21. Okay, it's the Olivet Discourse. So within this important portion of Scripture, in the book of Mark, 
We have this admonition. Take heed and watch and pray. So watch means to stay awake, not sleep. Okay, so if we were to take that literal, that would mean you don't sleep anymore. You just stay awake all the time. But that's not what it means. It means to be awake spiritually. Okay, Luke 21 and verse 36. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Okay, now here it's talking about him watching. Watch therefore and pray always that you would, it would when you see this come to pass, you'll stand before the Son of Man. Now watch for what? Well, verse 34, take heed unto yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged by surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Basically being caught up with the things of this world, being distracted from watching, so that day comes upon you unaware. So that's what watching means, okay? That's what watching means. And this word for watch is a unique word used in context here in Mark 13 as well as Luke 21. So, for as a man taking a far journey who left his, what, house? Okay, what is the house? He left his house, his temple, okay, and gave a third authority to his servants, every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Okay, here we have this word porter. Porter is a combination of two words in the Greek. One word is door. So it's a door, um, thyra, door, and oros means watcher. Okay, comes from the Aramaic word watcher angel. So it's a door watcher. That's who the porter is he's addressing, okay? Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes, at evening, at midnight, at cock crowing, or in the morning. So we have four watches, okay? Now this order of what he's talking, he's about, talking about when the Son of Man is coming in the clouds, okay? So when he's coming in the clouds, he's talking about the command of the porter to watch, so, what is the porter? Well, the, the porter is an order that we can see in the house of David. Okay, we see that in Revelation. And you see the 24 elders. They are operating out of this order of the house of David. So, within this, we have this coming of the Son of Man. We're in Mark chapter 13 and verse 35. So, that's 1, 3, 3, 5. As in 1,335 days... It says, watch you therefore. Okay? So what you begin to see is that within his instructions, there is uh, information that's coded in there that would tell us to watch. Okay? So it says you don't know the time and when it is. And that's apparent because it's pretty obvious there's not a lot of people teaching that, yes, the 1,335 days would be from the time of the one clothed in the sun to Pentecost 2021, three and a half years later. Now, also within the context here, we could see, learn the parable of the fig tree. Okay, learn the parable of the fig tree. And the parable of the fig tree is throughout the Bible, but we can look specifically at Luke. And we go to Luke chapter 13 and verse 6. And he spoke of the parable of a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came to sop the fruit and found none. He sent to the dresser of the vineyard, behold, three years. How many years? Three years. I come seeking fruit on the fig tree and find none. Cut it down why, and cumber it to the ground. And he said, Lord, let it be done also this year. I will dung it or fertilize it. I will dig about it. Okay. And if it bear fruit well, if not, then... Cut it down. Okay, so here's the parable of the fig tree right here in Luke chapter 13. Okay, let's act like this is our fig tree. Okay, like we did in the other video, but let's talk about it again. If you didn't see the other video, let's imagine that this is our fig tree. We have our fig tree. Our fig tree has been planted. It's been planted three years. All right, but when, when is the time of the year? Okay, so we want to do a specific count here to find out when the fig tree was planted. Okay, so the fig tree is being discussed at a certain time of the year. Now, the person, the dresser, says, Lord, let me dig around it. Okay, so he's going to dig a trench around the base of the fig tree and dung it. 
fertilize it, right? Okay, so it's going to fertilize it. It's going to have the opportunity to fill up with water. Now, the only time of the year you would do this is in the fall, okay? So just like the woman clothed with the sun, that happened in the fall feast time. Yom Kippur, tabernacles. Okay, so when you come to that time of the year, it's not raining yet. Okay, so basically from right now until that time in Israel, there's very little rain. The rainy season comes in the winter. So what he's doing is he's basically identifying the fact that, okay, the fig tree's not bearing fruit after these three years, but we're in the fall. Allow me to dig around it, put fertilizer in, okay? Digging around it is because the rain is going to come, and when the rain comes, hits the ground, it'll flow into the base around that fig tree, holding the water, holding the fertilizer to give the water and nutrients to the fig tree in the hopes that six months later, okay, during the spring, the fig tree would have figs. Okay, so what do we have? We have three years, and then we would check again because obviously there's not going to be any figs in the winter. We're going to check towards uh, the opposite time in the next year to see if it's going to have figs or not. Okay, so that's why the Feast of First Fruits, in the Feast of First Fruits, it's called Shavuot, it's called Pentecost. Even at such a time, you would be able to see figs or not on the tree. It would also bear fruit again another time in the fall. But what's happened here is we're getting timing. We can see three years in the fall, one year, two year, three years, then another six months, which would bring it, you know, towards the spring and then towards the summer, okay, to see if it have, if it have figs. Now, remember what I said. Learn the parable of fig tree when it branches yet tender, put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. Okay, so we can see clearly from the parable that the summer in the parable of the fig tree in Luke is talking about the same time. So, the three years started at Yom Kippur 2017, the sign of the woman clothed with the sun, coming precisely on the 1,335 days where it says Mark 13, 35, watch you therefore. For you know not when the master of the house comes, okay? Watch you therefore. Watch for what? Well, we have to watch 1,335 days, okay? So that is uh, what we can see with the command of the porter to watch. Now, when we find this order and command of the porter to watch, what we have to do is you have to go back in history and we have to go back to when the order of the porter started. And the order of the porters was not in Torah, was not at the time of Moses. The order of the porters comes with David, comes with David getting the Ark of the Covenant, bringing it to Jerusalem. When he, David gets the Ark of the Covenant, brings it into Jerusalem, you guys probably know the story. He puts it on a, on a cart. The Ark of the Covenant begins to fall off. Uzziah uh, braces it and he dies. Okay, when he dies, David's like, okay, we're doing something wrong. He went to (laughs) read the book and the instructions. Okay, you have to have a high priest. The high priests have the poles. They carry the ark on the poles. Okay, so he took some time to evaluate the situation and to say, all right, we we can't just, you know, God is killing people. My word just serves, so I must be doing something wrong. I have to find the instructions. So he goes into the Torah, into uh, the understanding of how to actually carry the ark. When he does so, the Most High gives him this order called the House of David. So the House of David is the order of the priests, the order of the elders, the order of the porters around the house. Now, when the when the um, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, when it was on its way coming to Jerusalem, didn't make it to Jerusalem, it stayed at someone's house. And I strongly encourage you guys to research Obadidim. Okay, you can see it in the title of the video, but Obadidim had the Ark of the Covenant at his house for three months. Okay, and it was said, Obadidim, his house is blessed in the three months that he had the Ark of the Covenant. So, Obadidim himself, by housing the Ark of the Covenant at his house, became the chief porter. Okay, became one of the four chief porters, and really what we can say is he is the chief porter. He is mentioned throughout the order in the book of Chronicles 
of the chief porter of the order of the porters. Okay? So, uh, that's the person that we look to where we find the instructions we're going to share with you in this video. Okay? You would have to know who the house of David is. You would have to know that there are names, there are people, okay, associated, okay, with the house of David, with this order. So, there's many things that uh, we share with you on this channel. In fact, one of the orders, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you this real quick because I think it's cool. And, uh, you know, as I always say, I like to show you guys stuff that you can physically see because I know a lot of what I'm talking about you don't really understand. Um, but sometimes when the kingdom is manifest and God's order is manifest and it happens around you or it happens in such a way I can physically show you something where you can see it. It has more of an impact for some reason. So um, so I'm just going to show you this. All right. So we, we read about the Order of the Porters in 1 Chronicles 26. Okay. And they, they begin to cast lots for uh, different gates. All right. And the eastward came to Shelemiah. Now, Shelemiah is Obadidan's son. Okay. So he gets a whole order. And they cast lots and they, um, to Zechariah, who goes north, Obadidam, to the south, and Asupum and Hosea came forth west at the gate of Shalketh. That causes the going up of the north. Eastward were six Levites. Northward were a day and southward four Asupumen, two by two. At Parbar, westward four at the causeway. Now, uh, what, that, what that actually is, now there's no temple here, guys. Where we are, we're in 1 Chronicles 26. David has set up a tabernacle. Okay, the tabernacle of David. He set up the order of all the priests. The order of everything is in place for the temple just to be built, okay? But around the tabernacle, the people assemble around the temple and they make gates and orders of the porters. That's what I just read to you. And at Parbar Westward, for at the causeway. Now, what the causeway is, is the causeway is a staircase, Okay. So I just gonna, I'm going to show you this because um, what you can't see in the video right now is a staircase. <laughs> so this is a, a staircase. All right, you can see staircase going up. All right, we, we, it has to be installed. Okay, but this just showed up, all right, as, as part of the, um, you know, maintenance and, and, and uh, of the place here. Okay, but I'm just showing you that that showed up just... You know, as I'm doing this message, and I'm, I'm trying to teach you this. So I can physically show you something of a stairway, okay, that is here. All right. Now, I also want to show you this. Uh, you see, this is called the Nathan Melek Seal Impression. Okay, now Nathan Melek is a... Uh, person in the Bible that was listed later, and he was actually serving at the gate called Parbar. Okay, this is how we knew where the temple's location was because we found this seal impression. And at that seal impression, the gate of Parbar has the causeway, the staircase. Okay, so um, you know how they talk about staircase or ladders, the staircase of Jacob's ladder. So in Greek, Okay, when you say ladder, it's the same word as English. We say staircase. So this is staircase. They would say ladder. Okay, but it's it's this heavenly ladder. Okay, it's this par bar gate ladder. Okay, that, uh, you know, we could see as the west part of the temple. That's how I knew the actual location with the temple by researching the gates. And the par bar gate is, in fact, where the we found this seal impression of Nathan Melek found in 2nd. Kings chapter 23. But now I just wanted to show you that as something that might be interesting. I don't know to you, but let's get into our notes. We do have notes on this video and look at the details of Obadidim. He commanded the porter to watch and Obadidim. Mark 13 32. But the day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels, not which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. Verse 23. Take heed that you watch. Agriopinio means A, not hypnos, like hypnotic, sleep. So not sleep. 
So watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Verse 34. As a man takes a far journey who left his what? House. And gave authority to his servants, every man his work, and he commanded the porter to watch. Okay, now porter. Who is the porter? Porter is, to, is uh, thyro oros. Okay, from the word thyra, meaning door, and oros, watcher. So, the order of the porter, okay, is what? It's the house of David. It is the temple. Okay, so when he left his house, okay, he left specific instructions in the house, in the temple of the porter. So, we have to see what that order of the command to the porter is. Okay? Then Mark 13.35, as in 1,335 days, okay? All this is coded in here if you watch, okay? If you do what he said, watch and pray, okay? Seek, ask, find. So 13.35, as in 135, 1,335 days, watch for you know not when the master of the what? House, when he comes, at evening, at midnight, at rooster crow, or the morning. So those are the four watches at the nighttime. Those are the four watches that the porter is responsible for watching. Right? So, as we mentioned before, what this is talking about is something called the key of David. The key of David is the temple. So I'm the master of the house. He's talking the commander of the porter to watch. So the key of David, he has the key of David. And I've set before you... An open door. And then it says, in the temple. All right, so it's talking about the temple. The temple is what? The house. In Isaiah 22, 22, the key of the house of David. Now this word, key, in Isaiah 22, that Christ is quoting from or alluding to, Isaiah 22, 22, key is mechtek, mechtek, something like that, okay? It means a key, an opening of a door. Okay, the key. Now, this word is only used three times in Scripture. The, one of the other places it's used is 1 Chronicles 9, 24. It's best, I'm reading to you literally the uh, translation. Four spirits were porters, east, west, north, south. So these are the four positions, east, west, uh, that we saw before, just like there's four times, evening, midnight, rooster crow, and morning. Okay. Actually, if you listen in the background, you might be able to hear that rooster or chicken. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's keep going. Verse 26. They were Levites, the four chief porters in their set office. So we have the key of David, the porters, east, west, south, north, were over the chambers. Okay, the chambers of what? The temple. The treasuries of what? The house of God. So this is the temple, the four chief porters. Okay, over the house of God, they lodged round about it because the charge was upon them and the opening. Okay, this is this word key, as in the key of the house of David, they were responsible for the opening and key, okay, every morning to open the temple. Okay, so that is the key. So when it's talking about the key of the house of David, they had the key. They were responsible for what? The opening of the house every morning. So this is what Christ is talking about. He's talking about the house. He commanded the porter to watch. So there are specific instructions he is giving us. So what is he telling us? He's telling us to look at the temple and to look at the porters. Now, when we look at the porters, hope you've been following along in the videos, and we look at Obadidim, we see a specific number related to his household, okay? So as you mentioned before, he becomes one of the four chief porters to the south that we read to you before, okay? Now in his household, and, and he, he's discussed in a couple places, all this is discussed in 1 Chronicles 15, 16, and then the porters are in 1 Chronicles chapter 26, okay? But in 1 Chronicles 26, it said Obadiah's household is 62, Okay, so now, as we begin to look at Obadiah, we begin to see Daniel's timeline, okay? It will be 62 weeks, okay, are determined. 62 weeks 
unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. Okay, so the number in Obadiah's household is 62, relating to 62 weeks. Then, if you look at verse Chronicles uh, chapter 16, verse 38, it says Obadiah and Hosea. Those two plus 68 is 70. Okay, so you got Obadiah now, it's got the number 70 associated with them, as in 70 weeks. 70 weeks are determined for your people in the holy city. Okay, now Obadiah has a son, and this we mentioned before, he's in the east, uh, Shemaliah, okay, towards the east, and with him he has six sons. So, sure enough, his son, also Obadiah's household, Shemaliah has what? Seven, him and his six sons, a total of seven. This relates to the seven weeks. Okay, so as it says, okay, Obadiah has 70 in 1 Chronicles 16 and 26. He's got 62 and he's got a son, 7, which is exactly Daniel's timeline. So when you look at the commandments and instructions of commanded the porter to watch, it's talking about Daniel's timeline, guys. Okay, so 70 weeks are determined until Messiah the Prince, 7 weeks and 62 weeks. So these are literal weeks. So what we're sharing with you are the actual weeks of Daniel's timeline. Yes. Then what we see in 1 Chronicles 15, Obadiah is counted as one of 14 porters. So what you would do is you count 62 weeks, then you count 7 weeks, all right, and then you come to the 70th week, after which you count 14 days. Okay, hopefully you watched the previous video. We explained that there. And this is what we're saying, guys, is that what's coded in this is the parable of the fig tree. Learn the parable of the fig tree. The branch is tender, put forth as leaves. You know that summer is nigh. Okay, these are the 1,335 days. So likewise, when you see all these things, no is near, even at the doors. Okay, what is the doors? The doors is the porters. So we could see that in Luke 13, it was three and a half years for the fig tree to bear fruit, to dig around it and water it for the winter rain. So three years have passed. It was in the fall. And then the winter rain, okay, would have brought it to three years, okay, and then you would check for the fruit and the figs towards the next year, okay, six to eight months, which is the same 1,335 days that we could see in throughout this prophecy, okay? So this is our um, continuous message on Daniel's timeline, and he commanded this, and this one is the House of David. We'll also uh, link this video to the House of David playlist. He commanded the porter to watch because it's part of the porter and the watching that you see um, most of what we're explaining to you in this video. Okay, guys, as we conclude, the other thing about the parable of the fig tree and the temple is the temple expresses the tree, the tree of life, through the menorah. Okay, so in this menorah, as you know, the priest would have the lamps, he would dress the lamps, and he would place the seven lamps, right? There would be the seven lamps, and in the uh, structure of the menorah, there are almond blossoms, okay? So in the center, there's four, and then there's three at each branch, okay? Now, this is very significant for us because think of it as it is the menorah, yes, but the menorah is also the tree of life, and one of the fruits of the tree of life, of course, is the fig tree, okay? And so the fig tree is also telling us to look at the menorah. Now, we know that these different you have the lamps, okay, but then the almond blossoms represent eclipses, right? So you know that they are eclipses. Each menor each almond blossom, okay, is marked by two eclipses, okay? The main there's a main eclipse that's marking the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls. We have other whole video to explain all this, but what I'm trying to get at is that there are two eclipses, all right, that mark six month intervals. Okay, over ten and a half years in the menorah, marking the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls. And we thus arrive at one, two, three on this branch here. And I think it's this one or this one, I forget, but those are the eclipses that are in 
Daniel's timeline that we can also see with Obadidim. So Obadidim, as a porter that had the key, okay, he had in his household, and he was associated with 70. 70 weeks are determined, okay? And 62 weeks. All right. Well, those 70 weeks are precisely the blood moon on May 25th, okay, coming just a day or two after the 1,335 days, marking perfectly. Then, two weeks later, is a solar eclipse, June 10th, in the North Pole, basically in, in Russia and Canada, okay? So that one is marking specifically the transition of the trumpets into the bowls and the cup of in his, his indignation, as we've been sharing with you, okay? All right, guys, this is the graphic, and I'll link this in the description field of the menorah eclipses. And in those eclipses, we have a sequence of eclipses, and we go back to January 10th. This is in the year 2020. So this partial lunar eclipse took place on January 10th, 2020, and this marked the peace deal. Okay, the confirming the covenant one week, that was the peace deal. So from that eclipse... Okay, the peace deal happened like a week or two later. But if we count the 70 weeks, okay, we count the 70 weeks, that brings us to May 26, 2021. That's the 25th or 26th. It, it's at midnight. So that's the full blood moon. Okay, that's 70 weeks. Then it says 14 days. Then you have another 14 days or two weeks that brings you to June 10th. 2021. Okay, so this is also the parable of the fig tree is to look at the uh, structure of the things in the temple, specifically the menorah, specifically the order of the porters. Okay, so isn't that extraordinary that in the famous prophecies of Daniel, the person, Obadidim, who hold, held the Ark of the Covenant in his house three months, Okay, he would have coded the numbers in his household specifically to Daniel's timeline, 70, 62, and his son, Shemaliah, 7. Okay, so this is the commands of the porter to watch, okay, to watch for Daniel's timeline, the 62 weeks, watch unto the 7 weeks, okay, and the 14 days, okay. If you don't know what we're talking about, guys, these are a series of videos we've been doing on Daniel's timeline. It's really important that you follow each video to know what we're talking about, okay? But these are the deep mysteries coded into the house of David, all right? So this will tie this video into the house of the D David playlist. The house of David playlist explains these uh, details of the porters. Uh, these are things we have mentioned years ago, but didn't really get into the depths like we are now because we're more and more accurately seeing specifics of the prophecy, okay? So guys, thanks for watching. The notes that um, we share with you in the video, of course, will be in the description field. This will be part of the playlist on Daniel's timeline. It'll be part of the playlist, the House of David, okay? So thanks for watching. Okay, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him that made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the fountains of waters. Amen.